Welcome to the 510 Podcast. I'm Heidi Matheson, and my goal in the next 5 to 10 minutes is to bring you some encouragement from the Word of God, and to do what Paul tells us to do in Ephesians 5 verse 10, to find out what pleases the Lord. Together, let's strengthen our faith through the Word of God. Towards the end of his letter to the Philippians, Paul says something that has often niggled me a bit with annoyance. Often when I've heard this verse quoted or even read it, I've bristled a little bit on the inside. In Philippians 4 verse 4, Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Now, the reason why I have felt a bit annoyed is that I don't think it's easy to rejoice always. I've experienced moments, days. In fact, I've experienced significant periods of time in my life. When it's very difficult to rejoice, it's very difficult to choose joy in those situations. But then I realized that actually I was misunderstanding Paul. I was reading this verse incorrectly because he doesn't say rejoice in your life or rejoice in your circumstances or rejoice in your pain and your difficulty. What he says is rejoice in the Lord. Paul is exhorting us to choose joy because of who Jesus is, because of what he's done for us, regardless of what's happening in our lives and our circumstances. And there's an account in Acts that is an excellent example of rejoicing in the Lord despite difficult circumstances, a situation where Paul himself chose joy in the midst of difficulty. In Acts chapter 16, Luke tells us about a slave girl who had been earning money for her owners by fortune-telling. The girl was following Paul and the other disciples, and she kept shouting out. She was saying, these men are servants of the Most High God. Paul was troubled by the girl. She was probably being quite disruptive. And he turned to her, and he cast an evil spirit out of her, which now meant that she could no longer tell fortunes. So her owners were angry because their business venture had been destroyed. So they seized Paul and Silas, they dragged them in front of the authorities, and they started falsely accusing them, and they incited a public attack on Paul and Silas. The magistrate then ordered Paul and Silas to be stripped and severely flogged and then thrown into prison. So we have a situation where Paul and Silas are out there ministering the gospel, they're doing God's will, they're doing God's work, They're bringing healing to people oppressed by evil spirits. And they find themselves falsely accused, beaten, and then thrown into prison. Now, I'm not sure I'd be able to choose joy in this situation. I think I might feel a bit resentful, perhaps a bit angry, perhaps a lot angry. But let's read Paul and Silas's reaction. I'm going to pick up the story in verse 25 of Acts chapter 16. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Their jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself, we're all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, The jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. Paul and Silas chose to rejoice in the Lord, even though they were in severe pain They'd been falsely accused. They'd been humiliated in public. They'd done nothing wrong. In fact, they'd been doing something right for the Lord. They chose prayer and worship. They chose joy. 
And the Lord worked on their behalf. An earthquake set them free. The jailer and his family got saved. And if you continue reading, the magistrates were made aware that they'd done wrong against citizens of Rome. And this story helps to make sense of Paul's instructions to always rejoice in the Lord. We find this theme running through other parts of the Bible. James, the brother of Jesus, says in James 1 verse 2, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 13, But rejoice inasmuch as you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. And Paul also repeats his command to the Thessalonians. In 1 Thessalonians 5.16, he says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now, friends, I know that this isn't easy, but I think that Paul is trying to show us that God honors our choice to be joyful. He honors our choice to be grateful. He honors an attitude of humility towards him when we find ourselves in difficult circumstances. Even in the Old Testament, the prophet Habakkuk is a humbling example of this principle. Listen to what he says in Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, Though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. There is something about choosing joy that changes our hearts and our circumstances. There is a spiritual principle here that goes beyond our human comprehension. I don't understand it. But despite my niggles of annoyance when I hear that verse, I've decided that I'm determined to choose joy. I've decided that I'm determined to rejoice always. I'm going to try this out. I want to give the Lord the opportunity to change my circumstances I want to put myself in the best position to see his glory revealed in and through my life. I want to do God's will for me, and I want to see him do great things. You know, David in the Old Testament chose this pathway many times. Throughout the Psalms, we read of his determination, his decision to choose joy, to choose worship over sorrow. Psalm 59 was written by David when Saul had sent men to watch his house with the purpose of killing David. David felt vulnerable. He felt pursued. He felt persecuted. He was probably exhausted. And in verse 16, he says, But I will sing of your strength. In the morning, I will sing of your love, for you are my fortress, my refuge in times of trouble. You are my strength. I sing praise to you. You, God, are my fortress, my God on whom I can rely. What are you facing today? Are there any challenges in your circumstances right now? Is there an area where you need to choose joy? Friends, will you join with me? Will you make a decision today to follow the instructions of Peter and James who knew Jesus intimately, to follow the instructions of Paul, who'd had a life-altering experience with the risen Jesus. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Thanks for listening to the 510 Podcast. I really hope you're encouraged today. I'd love it if you would take a moment to rate the 510 Podcast on your favorite podcast player. And if you found this episode helpful, please consider sharing it with a friend.